came in this industry with all the odds stacked against me. Had to get it from the ground up. Follow me as I build my empire. It's truck and relief. What's up, YouTube? Mm-mm-mm. Hey, so YouTube, I'm about to have a conversation with y'all, right? <laughs> I'm about to have a conversation with y'all. It's going to rub a lot of people the wrong way. And a lot of people might not even understand or comprehend where I'm coming from. But before I say what I'm about to say, or break down what I'm about to break down, I just want to explain to y'all how I think, like, like, I'm an introverted person, so a lot of times I just spend riding down the road just like my mind be going off and I just be thinking about stuff but when I get downtime like I'm always analyzing basically I'm always analyzing my situations analyzing my plans my future plans analyzing stuff I did in the past and maybe stuff I could have did different and what I'm about to say has nothing to do with like the situation I'm in or as far as like this virus situation. This is something I've been actually thinking about for a minute. Kind of right before I got my authority. But it kind of like, I would say since I've been on this authority side, it kind of stamped that what I believe and what I'm about to say. So it's like, I was thinking about this before I came on the authority side, kind of like right after I bought my truck, a couple months after I bought my truck. But it's like, I knew I wasn't gonna really be able to prove this to myself or like really be able to know until I came on this, until I came on this authority side. So it's like, I just had to get on the side to like kind of like prove it to myself. All right. I know you're probably waiting like what the hell I'm talking about. All right. So I'm going to explain this different couple of ways to make sure people understand where I'm coming from. All right. So why I say trucking is the wrong investment to make. I mean that from a long-term play, right? As far as investing in, t so you say you, 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 tr you're trying to build a, a business and we talking about you doing it in the logistics chain. So at the top you have shippers, which is the, basically the people who have the product below them. You have the brokers. They're the middleman who's in some situations controlling the product. You have the owners of the product, which is the shippers. You have the brokers who are the middleman and basically controlling the product. So you have the shippers, owners of the product. You have the brokers who are controlling the product. And then you have us at the bottom, the drivers, basically the people who are distributing the product. So the reason why the investing it and putting you all your time into trying to build up a trucker company, why it is the wrong move is because you're never going to control shit. So like us as us, and this is me included, us as the people who are 
putting all our time and money into this equipment, which we all know that breaks down whether it's old or new, is is an endless, I would say, damn near endless money pit. As far as long, on the long term, like you always keep. Say a command for additional commands. Say down. I'm about to talk some serious shit. All right. So you have us as people who's trying to own the trucking part of the round of the logistics side, the trucking company. We invest in all this money into this equipment, as expensive as equipment, that we know that's just gonna break down as we running down the road. I mean, which is supposed, I mean, it's, it's just like driving a car. You can't think you're not gonna have a car and not have maintenance. So that's not really what I'm saying. I'm just saying, but we invest, we invest in all this money into this depreciating asset, which we know they are making even less worth it with all the emission stuff they put on there. So you got us all the way at the bottom of the food chain, investing all our money and time into buying all these equipment all just to be fighting like a crabs in a barrel mentality to haul this product that the shippers are dangling in front of our face. So we fighting and scratching at the bottom like you got trucker company A saying, I haul it for this price. Trucker company B, no, I haul it for lower price. Pick me. Trucker company C, no, pick me. I haul it, I haul it for even less. So they basically dangling all this, they like, uh, because the people who really control the market or control everything is the person who owns the product. Remember that. They can they can set the standard on anything. They can drop the price, raise the price, do whatever the fuck they want to do. And, and we really, as a trucking company, have no fucking leverage in the whole supply chain whatsoever. We like all the way at the bottom. So they basically could adjust. They got all the leverage because for we we got we we paying all this money on this equipment. So you got to keep you got to for the people who have payments and all that stuff like they dangling this product for a rate, and you like oh I need you to go up on the rate. They can say yeah or nay whether they want to go up on the rate. At the end of the day, you still got to make your truck note make your truck payment, truck insurance, all that stuff, mind you, the truck insurance goes up yearly, every year. They, they, they boosting that rate on, a, on a, the, the insurance for the authority constantly. And then the people who, who had to keep foot in the bill is the, the trucking companies who own the truck company. While you got the owners of the product, they getting richer and richer of new products they create, whether it's like the Amazons of the world or whoever, food product, whatever. And then take this in, into account too. We invest in all this time and money into this, this, this equipment when we can get X'd out the picture at any given time. Like I just said, look at Amazon, what are they doing? What's to stop the big company, the people who have their own product, what's to stop them from getting getting their own trucks? I'm gonna give you three different scenarios of, of big companies that, that that own their whole product. See, the business model of a, of a big company is to be a conglomerate, basically, which is kind of like owning everything. So the first is like we jumping in this the wrong way. We jumping in from the bottom, whereas which you, where you should be jumping in the logistics chain is trying to create a product, and then branching out. Where we come in trying to go out and come in, and I'm gonna explain what I mean by that. Look at the look at the companies, right? You got companies like I'm um, for a car haul, and you say like CarMax. They have the product, which is the used cars that they selling. They have their own finance company, own everything. CarMax originally used to contract out 
to the trucking car hauler companies to deliver the cars for them. They slowly but surely got their own trucks. They started off just with getting their own little seven cars, six cars. Now they got their own stingers. And they slowly but surely axing out all the contract where they're going to be hauling their all their own product, which is the used cars. So they're not, they not going to need truck drivers eventually no more. Trucking companies, they got they can haul their own loads. You got the Amazon. They started out with the product or the service, whatever you want to call it. Slowly but surely, what they do? Got their own trucks. Now they hauling their own product. Boom. X out the trucking companies. Walmart started with their own product. Slowly but surely got their own trucks. Xing out the trucking companies. The common denominator, they made sure they had the product. It's anybody could buy a fucking truck and drive down the road. And what we doing is really not that fucking special. Keep it the honey. As much as I love driving the truck, how fun it is going up and down the road. The shit that we doing is really not that special. It's all based on a person just whether they want to do it or not. Most people just don't want to do it because it's simple fact of how you stand away from your family. But as far as just for on the business side of it, what's to stop a big company from purchasing their own trucks? It's nothing stopping them from doing it. So this is what I'm trying to say. Like we made it cool to want to buy trucks. Get you a trucking company. We made that shit cool. What we really should be pushing is fucking starting a, a product or creating a product. Like, I know a lot of people want to look at... Some people may not got the confidence or even think that they can like this shit possible. They might be looking like, nigga, what the fuck is you talking about? But for the people who do hear me, who got some business sense, or like, I'm saying, I'm flipping that light switch, what we really need to be pushing on YouTube or any social media is starting a product. Like, forget starting a trucking company, bruh. A trucking company is not worth shit if you don't have the product to move. <laughs> we building a whole business infrastructure on depending on somebody else to give us a load. That's no different from us building a business around begging somebody to, to give us a job, basically. It's, what's the difference? What's the difference? Me big, me building a trucking company. What's the difference from that and versus a person begging the man for a job? It's no difference. I I buy these trucks, buy trucks, whatever. I, you know what I'm saying? Start a truck company. I'm basically begging the shipper or a broker to give me work for that truck. I have no no that truck is no good to me if I have no work to move. Is 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 we we ass backwards in this whole logistics chain? Like it's crazy. It's crazy. Like we got it all jacked up, all misconstrued on how you how we supposed to be viewing this. Like and this is just real talking. Like I said, it ain't. Some people might think, oh, he's just talking like that because of you know what I'm saying loads jacked up. Now honestly, I've been thinking about this. Like I said, before I even got my authority, before I opened my authority back up, it's just, I needed to get on this side of the wall to kind of like prove my theory. Or, you know what I'm saying? Not prove it, but just, you know what I'm saying? Just to have that stamp, like, just that I wasn't, I would never be fully convicted on with my thoughts until I got on this side of the side of the wall. And I don't want nobody to take this video and think I'm I'm saying like don't get in the truck and or nothing like that. I'm just saying what I'm trying to say, I guess like try to think differently. Think outside the box. Like don't like rethink that whole model of us trying to build these trucking companies. Like we need to be trying to like if you like okay, this is this is another way to view it or think about it. Like I said, this might take a long time or whatever. 
first of all, it's, it's not. It's, what I'm learning also is better to do business with people instead of trying to start a business on your own. But that's another conversation. But I guess a better way of doing this would be, I guess, like when you're driving for a trucking company, instead of you trying to think about what truck to buy, trying to freaking st start a business a tight start a product that you can kind of like build up and then you could build out as far as like buying trucks to distribute your product when you get to a bigger scale and you need to you need to get it shipped out because that's a nice it's a nice skill set to have as far as driving these trucks but at the end of the day if you don't got no product to put in that truck what good is that truck and that's just real talk so I guess this video is just to flip that switch for some people who who it might flip. Just think think a little different, man. Like we really, and I say we because I got my truck, I bought a truck, you know. But I'm thinking like maybe the wrong wrong way of looking at it. But I really wanted to, my whole reason for really getting this truck, getting my truck and getting my authority was really to control my time. Like I didn't, I didn't really get my authority to make more money, to be honest with you. I got my authority to control my time so that I can invest in other things or, you know what I'm saying, have, start get get my time. It's kind of like the control of my time to kind of like, weed myself out of the situation because it's like once you get into this truck and it's kind of hard to get out because your income get dependent on your lifestyle get dependent on the income you're making and then you get used to running the road and stuff so it's like it kind of is you, you can't just go get out and go get in another job and then the trucking as a company driver trucking dominates your life i mean as a business owner it dominates it too but you kind of like dictate a little bit more like I said, especially if you get in a, a comfortable position where it's like, you know what I'm saying, you don't got that much overhead, truck paid off, all that type of stuff. So that was really more so my reason for getting this authority side was more so to just control my time. Like I kinda, I ain't gonna lie, the longer I was getting it, the less I was really wanting to have the multiple truck. It was more so me getting my one truck and using it as an investment tool to invest in other things more so. But yeah, this is something to think about. Y'all could, you could, you know what I'm saying? Take what I say for a grain of salt. Say I don't know what I'm talking about. Just my opinion. But I'm just saying. Start thinking differently, man. Fuck owning a trucking company. Try to be the shipper. They the ones who really winning in this whole thing. They control the whole market. Forget trying to be a brokerage. I mean, you could do a brokerage too, but they they got more control than freaking truck drivers. But at the end of the day, they still they still move off of what the shipper willing to uh, pay them. So like I said, the shippers is really the plug. Really a plug. If this was the, <laughs> for any street dudes out there, if this was the drug game, I'd say the shippers is like people in Mexico, cartel type people who making the product over there. And then you got the brokers, they the middleman connecting it to the, the the people who's on the street doing hand to hand, which is the truck drivers. We basically nickel and diamond on the street, moving it for them. But the real people who making the money is the shippers. I'd rather be all the way at the top. That's just the way I see it. But that's the hardest part though. Creating the, getting the product, and then two, even getting the product that big of a size to where you could, you know what I'm saying, distribute it. I don't know, man. Maybe I'm just rambling, maybe I'm just talking, but yeah, man. 
I ain't gonna hold y'all for too much longer, man. Just something to think about. Like I said, just trying. This is the things I think about that go through my head. I never really thought small. I'm always thinking on the larger scale, man. Man, I'll holler at y'all in the next video.